Good day, everyone. We are to have the discussion regarding ethos, pathos, and logos. I'll be having my video off. So I'll be sharing on screen the discussion for as a as coverage for your upcoming review. So this discussion is entitled Ethos, Pathos, and Logos. So these are the learning targets. You are to describe an argument and what is not. So second, we are to identify ethos, pathos, and logos statements. And third, we are to write a philosophical paper. So this, is what, this would be your task. For, uh, and that is for you to write a philosophical paper that uses different modes of persuasion. So let's first discuss what is an argument. So in philosophy class, argument are series of statements, including at least one premise. So an argument cannot be called an argument if there would be no premises. So premises are examples of sentences that demonstrate what to argue. So that is a premise. And to end a certain argument, there must be a conclusion. So for you to win an argument, there must be a connection between the premises that you set and the conclusion that you are going to say at the end of the uh, argument. So these statements serve as premises and conclusions are sometimes referred to as propositions. So if someone would like to start an argument, there must be a proposition. You could say, these are my proposals. So proposals or propositions that would be your starting premises. So these are in uh, declarative sentences. You are not going to make an argument if there are no, uh, if there are no clear declarative sentences. So this is not interrogative. So in an argument, you are not going to ask question, but you are to lay down premises. So how are we going to identify the arguments? Check on the signal words. And those signal words in speech or text can serve as alerts that there is an argument afoot. So what are those signal words? So you could say, uh, I strongly believe, I greatly believe. So those are examples of phrases or signal words that you could use if someone would like to, not, to have an argument. So those are examples, but it's not limited to the examples that I have given. So the word because and all of its synonyms may alert a reader or even a listener that is that there is a premise or reason. So it is being provided to support a claim. So in an argument, aside from having the premise, there must be a claim. So you could, we could say, what is the argument for? So that is the claim that you need to satisfy um, and to win in, in in laying down your arguments. So these are examples of words and phrases that you could use to start a premise. Example, as, as indicated by, as a result of, because, being that, by reason of, by virtue of, due to, for, for the reason that, in as much as, in that, in the view of, in inferred from, other examples are on the ground that, owing to, seeing that, seems, thanks to, through, or whereas. So these are examples, but not limited to this example. So you could start an argument if there are signal words. So signal words can also help us in identifying if there is really an argument or if there would be a start of argument. But you should keep these caveats in mind. So what are caveats? So these are uh, reminders, okay, for people that would like to start an argument. First, argument signal words are not always present when an argument is being made. So what does it mean? So it, uh, um, it's not all the time that there would be signal words that you could hear from uh, argumentator. So... Not all the time that you could have, you could hear or listen signal words from an argumentator. So since there are no signal words, you need to know how to determine the connotation of the words that they may say or that they may utter. Second, sometimes words that could function as signal words for an argument are used in other contexts where there is no argument present. 
Uh, example, uh, they're not laying an argument, but they have used those signal words that we tackled, well, we showed earlier. So if ever, uh, bear in mind that this could guide you if ever you are to lay down or arguments or you, if you want to identify whether there are really an argument or not. Next, so what are the types of arguments? So in modes of persuasion, we have logos, ethos, and pathos. So let's start with logos. What do we mean by logos? So this logos is referring to an argument based on facts, evidence, and reason, appealing to the reader's sense of what is logical. So this is, uh, they are persuading the person in terms of the facts or evidence that they have. So that is logos. Meanwhile, if we are to tahal naman ethos, we could say that an ethos, um, it gives appeals to the audiences in terms of ethical behavior. What is right? So the writer or speaker presents him or herself to the audience as credible, trustworthy, honest, and ethical. And lastly, we have the pathos, which refers to uh, arguments or modes of persuasion that is based on feelings. So the, instead of uh, relying on facts, it relies on the emotions or readers' emotions. They are trying to convince the reader or convince the listeners in terms of emotions and feelings. So we have the three types of arguments, namely as logos, ethos, and pathos. So if we are to discuss the difference among the three, logos is based on facts, ethos is based on behavior, or sense of ethical behavior, and pathos uh, refers to the, or based on feelings. So let us have the examples later. So the goal of argumentative writing or giving or writing different arguments is to persuade your audience. So who are your audience? It could be your listeners or viewers if they are looking at you, audience if they are listening to you. So that your ideas are valid or more valid than someone else. So Actually, it was started by the Greek philosopher Aristotle, divided the means of persuasion, which the appeals is categorized into three, the ethos, pathos, and logos. So let me recall, ethos is based on, uh, ethos is based on ethical behavior, pathos is based on emotions, and logos is based on facts. So if we are to illustrate it, look at the picture that we have provided in the screen. Ethos, the appeal is by ethics. So who are doing it? Are they credible enough for them to do that? So is it ethical or not? If it's pathos, there must be an appeal by emotion. Uh, are the listeners carried away by the type of emotions that they have felt from the narrative or the arguments? Or they are taken away by the feelings that they have felt or experienced from the uh, from the type of narrative or arguments that they have heard. And third, we have logos, wherein it appears by logic by providing different evidences and facts. So let us have the etymology. When we say etymology, this refers to derivation. Where do we get those terms? So for ethos, this is actually a Greek word, which means character. So it refers to the trustworthiness or credibility of the writer or, spe or speaker. Ethos is often conveyed through tone and style of the message and through the way the writer or speaker refers to differing views. Example, if a boss is as or if your boss is talking to you because of the because the person is your boss, you could say uh the there is credibility, there is the, the credibility from the type of position that your boss has. And since you are just an employee, everything that your boss will tell you, there will be a notion to follow the kind of uh, instruction that he or she might give to you. So it becomes ethos because it, uh, the type of appealing is dependent on the credibility or the kind of position that, uh, that the writer or speaker has. So we could say ethos, if they are using their positions, using their uh, credibility or in terms of ethical behavior and so on. So in this way, you could 
uh, identify if a narrative or an argument is an ethos form if it shows trustworthiness or credibility of the writer or speaker. While pathos is Greek for suffering or experience, which is associated with emotion. It is often associated with emotional appeal, but a better equivalent might be appeal to the audience's sympathies and imagination. So if an argument is convincing you to believe the argument due to the appeal in the emotion, that is pathos. Okay. Third is logos, Greek for word. How good are the words or consistency of the messages in the claim? Okay. So it refers to the internal consistency of the message, the clarity of the claim, the logic of its reasons, and the effectiveness of its supporting evidence. So as you can see, th these three arguments are working differently. Ethos is building the character of the person, while pathos is targeting your emotion. And the third one, logos, is targeting the consistency of the message. So ethos is for credibility. Pathos is for emotional, logos is for logical. So these are the derived meaning from the etymology, etymology that we uh, discussed earlier. So in terms of importance, why is it important to have these forms of rhetoric or types of arguments? So for us to have diversity in our way of speaking or writing. So when we say rhetoric... It refers to the art of speaking or writing effectively. This is from Webster's definition. But according to Aristotle, rhetoric is the ability in each particular case to see the available means of persuasion. So we are more rhetorical if we use as facts. We have the character to persuade other people and we could appeal to their emotions. So ethos... These are providing personal experiences. They know someone else who has personal experiences or expertise. You are using expert support. So in ethos, it can be used through extensive or it can be um, used in a way like through extensive research, through up-to-date research, and through recognized authorities in the field. So example, between uh, an employer and a boss, who would likely be persuade other people? It could be the boss instead of the employee. Because there is a recognized authorities between the boss and the employee. Second, pathos. This kind of appeal can be very effective if it's not overdone, especially if your topic is an emotional one. So if our argument, if you want to win an argument in a way that you target the emotions or the feelings of your listeners better use pathos. So we are uh, advising everyone, if you are to incorporate pathos, make sure you carry appropriate connotations that will not give different meaning to the arguments that you are going to lay down. And the third one, logos. These uh, includes facts, examples, precedents, authority, deductive or inductive. As you can see, when we say facts, these are valuable because they are not debatable. Because you cannot, you can no longer fight the facts. If, if that is the fact, therefore, no one can contradict it because it's the absolute truth. So when you are laying facts, there must be examples. There must be qualified person that they are telling the facts or qualified uh, sources in terms of the facts that you are going to add in your argument. Deductive or inductive? Deductive reasoning is when you pick apart evidence to reach conclusions. So an inductive reasoning is when you add logical pieces to the evidence, vice versa. It could be called deductive. If you have those pieces, making it in a big uh, in a big form of evidence. So look at the triangle of argument. So if we wanted to have these techniques, make sure you have the character to persuade the people to believe in you. So you should have the ethos. So if you want to persuade someone else, so you need to also to target the emotion. That's why you need to be skillful and expert in the pathos part. And of course, 
For the logos, since you need to be logical and do have the correct reasoning, therefore, your argument should be surrounded by facts. So look at these examples. So for the first one, we could say this ethos. Look at the example. As your principal, I warn you not to use cell phones in class again. This is prohibited. So the example is stating that the person is telling his or her his position as a principal for, for him to uh, uh, instigate the rules to the student. So in this case, the principal knows that his position commands a lot of authority among pupils. So if again, if you're building a character that is ethos. Now, second one, if we are to use a pathos uh, statements, we could have these examples. I'll look at the uh, script that was provided in the second example in the middle of the picture. Can you imagine how it would feel if others use phones while you were talking? This is all about respect. So the person in the picture is not talking about he, her uh, position as a student. Instead, she targeted the emotions of paying respect. So if you respect someone, better not use phones. So in this case, if you are just targeting the emotions and you're not saying your position to other people, that is pathos. The speaker forces the children to imagine themselves in a different situation. So appealing to empathy and respect. This is an example of pathos. Mean, and the last one, logos, look at the third example. You could say that there is provision of facts. Look at what the person is telling. Actually, research shows that students who don't look at phones score 23% better in our exam. So what does it say? What does it say or say about the use of cell phone? So he stated facts that there are 23%, percent, 23%. Percent, uh, if they are not going to use phones, it, it's either they, uh, the scores would increase. So they could have or scored better in terms of the percentage of getting right or uh, correct scores. So the speaker presents the audience with persuasive scientific evidence by stating statistics, facts, or examples. So this is an example of logos. So other examples are also provided in the second slide in the second slide. Please help yourself by identifying the keywords. So for ethos, as if the, someone is talking with another one, I am a licensed lawyer who has completed many successful cases in defending my clients. I have been with this company for six years. So, so the first example is telling the position of a lawyer. So in this case, this is a kind of per, uh, persuasive mode or mode of persuasion or type of argument if the person is telling about his or her position. So a person that might hear here, this could have this kind of response. Example, that's excellent. I'm looking forward to doing business with you. So the person is convinced because the, per, uh, the person he's talking to is telling about the position, their successful cases, and he's been working for six years. And another one, pathos. Example is a mom and a daughter is talking with one another, and the, uh, the daughter is telling her mother the following. Okay, mom, I really don't want to go to school today. My stomach hurts too much. Uh, then there is dramatization from the daughter, or uh, she is trying to make the or persuade her mother that he or convince her mother that she is really heavy or ill in the stomach. So the uh, the person she's talking to, the mother, replied, okay, stay home and get some rest. I'll wake you up when breakfast is ready. So she was attached with the type of uh, actions or uh, modes of persuasion that her daughter is telling. So 
Pathos is frequently translated as some variation of emotional appeal, but it originally referred to the elements of speech that appeal to any audience's sensibilities. So since the mother is very sensible, what happened to the example? The mother was convinced that the daughter should take some rest. And the third one is stating examples of logos. Uh, Sir, you should stop smoking because you can get cancer and die. Thousands of people died every year from smoking. So the child, the girl is telling about facts about smoking. But the person is saying, okay, whatever, go away, kid. In this example, there, we, there is an actual content of a speech. But uh, aside from delivering the content of the speech, there is manifestation of the facts that were added to convince the person not to smoke. So these are examples of ethos, pathos, and logos. So we have a lot of examples here. Please take time to, uh, to read over the examples and the explanations are given below. So in summary, ethos, the source's credibility, the speaker's authority. Logos, the logic used to support a claim. So for pathos, there is emotional or motivational appeals. It would be through the use of vivid language, emotional language, and numerous sensory details. So that ends the discussion or this virtual discussion.